Hi, I'm Gary Strickler. Years ago, my dad had a carpenter who worked with him who said, I got cut talking when I should have been listening. Well, recently I got asked to work on a project. It's this kidney-shaped dressing table. And partway through the job, I started thinking, maybe I should have been listening instead of talking. But, um, you know, my dad also had kind of a policy or thought he'd say, well, if somebody's built one, surely we can figure out how to do it. So I'm thankful to say I was able to build it, although it was kind of a challenge. Now, I realize that not very many people are going to be asked to build something like that kidney-shaped dressing table. But while I was doing the project, there were so many techniques and tips and things that I used that I've learned over the years that I just wanted to do this video and kind of share some of those. Now, the first thing, and I'm already going to have shared a video on this, but I had to create a template of the top, an actual to scale template of the top. And again, I'm going to share a video on how I laid that out. But this is the template at the top. Of course, I was given, you know, a width that my client said it could be because it was going into a, a certain hole or so, certain space in her house. And also she had a request of how deep she wanted it to be and she wanted a, a drawer in it. Now the drawer was really kind of a challenge that added quite a bit to the degree of difficulty. But the first thing I had to do was, or that I felt like I needed to do was to glue up the apron that went around the top. And that actually had to be two glue ups. One could be out of poplar with just an outside layer of oak, because this is all white oak. Now, I also could have used bending plywood, but I chose not to, and uh, it worked out pretty well using the poplar. It really gave me a rigid, firm apron, which gives me a lot of strength for attaching my legs to. Had to do it over again. I don't know whether I might try using the bending plywood or not. But anyway, I used poplar on this, and then the drawer front itself, because when the drawer front's pulled out, you're going to be able to see it, had to all be out of white oak. But the first thing that I had to do was, because this represents the actual top, I wanted to have about three quarters of an inch of overhang, uh, where the top overhung the apron. And then because my apron's got to be three quarters of an inch thick, I needed to create a pattern that was an inch and a half back from this, which would be the line I glue on. This is actually the pattern for the drawer front portion of it. Now, the drawer front portion of it significantly overlapped the rest of the apron. And then after I glued the pieces up, I very carefully chose the point right here at about this high point where I was going to have the drawer front fit. But everything was done quite a bit long. And that probably is one of the first things that I would want to say Anytime you're doing any kind of curved laminations, you want to make your pieces extra long and also extra wide because it's almost impossible to get everything to just stay perfectly lined up. So I always make things, you know, extra wide. Like if I want a, a, in this instance, want about a six and a half inch apron, I made seven inch pieces. Now, those pieces that I use were eighth inch thick, actually a little less than eight inches thick because I had seven layers to come up with something that was right at thir uh, three quarters, between thir three quarters and 13 sixteenths. So the way that I did that is I took boards and stood them up on edge. My table saw rip a little over three inches and I just resawed from each edge. And then I had a little bit in the middle, about, about an inch in the middle. And I went to a band saw and sawed that middle part. If you're really good with a bandsaw, you might be able to saw the whole thing on a bandsaw. And if you don't own a bandsaw, I have. It's not much fun, but I've taken a really long recip saw blade and cut that middle piece out of it. Then I took the pieces and planed them down. I mean, they are not quite a quarter inch, at least three sixteenths thick, so I could run them through my planer. And I did have a planer with a helical head, which helped a lot. But that's how I made the strips. But how did I move this back exactly an inch and a half. And I've shared this a bunch of times, but I took this router bit, which is a white side uh, multi-rebate multi -rebate kit, and with a small bearing, it'll make a half inch rebate. 
So here's an example of that. You can see where I've got the rebate. And then what I did is just took a flush trim bit. And so the flush trim bit rides on the rebate that you made and removes the rest of it. And that, in essence, moves the line back. Now, because I was coming back an inch and a half, I actually had to do that three times to get from this outside edge back to there. But once I had that pattern, then I could set up my, my brackets that I used to form that with. Now, I actually use, and I don't even know if these are available anymore. I don't know if this company's in business, but I did want to say I use this, this system. It's the, uh, the Easy Laminating, Easy Arch Laminating Clamps. It's from the Slack Tool Company. I haven't heard anything out of them in probably 10 or 15 years. I may be out of business. But I did want to, you know, kind of give them a shout out in case they are in business. It's just nuts with a threaded, on a, on a threaded rod, and you have this hollow. This has to be hollow so you can jump over it. But basically, as you tighten the nut up, it just moves this piece in and clamps it, and there's some rubber there. Anyway, but you could also do it. This is more the way I do most of my curved glue ups. I have these metal L brackets, which have been made out of uh, 5 16 I think this is 6 by 6 angle iron. It was cut with a bandsaw, and I just drilled holes. And so I, I just put it wherever it needs to be on the line, screw it down, and then this is key on a wide jam. I put another piece of metal on the back side to spread the clamping pressure all the way up and down. Now, this metal has to be on there because if, if especially if you're on tight radius the fibers will blow out if you don't have that metal supporting it this is just some thin metal uh, you can use eighth inch metal this is even a little bit thinner than that but the key is you need that metal and of course on the inside it gives you a nice uh, even radius because in some instances I was going two or three inches in between these brackets but at any rate to form the apron I screw um, the other part of the apron, not the drawer front. And again, I could have done the drawer front using these two, but I just screwed these brackets down. Now I did screw them down. Like if I wanted to, to my the inside edge of my lamination be right there, you actually have to put your brackets back the thickness of the metal to give you that exact size. Uh, of course, I used a good bit of glue. I used Type Bond too. You could use Type Bond one. Type Bond even makes a product called Extend, which I probably would have been better off if I'd used the Extend, which dries a little slower because that gives you more open time to to work your clamps. And by the way, these are some uh, big, really large C clamps. They're from Bessie, and the nice thing about them is they. Uh, You know, they also slide back and forth, so you're not in a sit. you know, when you, as you pull it up, you can get to a position and then tighten it up. Anyway, that is how I made the apron. Of course, you know, there's a good bit of sanding and everything, and I, when I glued those things up, I let them dry at least half a day. Uh, the drawer front, which is one I was most concerned about, I actually left it glued up for about a day because it was super important, you know, that it exactly followed that line at the top because, you know, it's not nailed to anything. Everything else was is going to be nailed to some other pieces. Again, I'm not going to get into the total details of how I did that. So the only other thing that I want to share is I also had to make a couple pieces of trim to go around this uh, cabinet, one at the top and one at the bottom. And the way that I did that, before this top was on, I put a piece of half inch MDF right over the, the, ba the band. Now, you can't see inside there, but there's a piece of three quarter plywood that was cut to fit inside of that, that apron band. And so that was holding it. And I just put a piece of half inch MDF on top of it and let the bearing of my router bit ride against the face of my band, so I basically made an exact duplicate of the uh, 
the face of the band. And although this is pretty ugly, this is it. And then I used a piece of half inch MDF, but because I wanted to have more than a half an inch to glue to, I just put another piece on top of it. I actually jigsawed kind of close, so I wasn't making a whole bunch of MDF dust. And then I flush trimmed it, so I had a full inch of clamping surface. Now it's also important to put some cleats on the bottom. The reason for that is because as you're using this clamp, if your form is right down on the surface, there's not much room to spin this. It's little bitty things, but things that I kind of learned. So one of my pieces of trim was just two pieces of white oak together, uh, about an eighth of an inch for the top piece. And then the bottom was three, but I used the same process. One of the things, this is another tip, I put masking tape around this to make sure the thing, and some glue's going to get out, that I didn't end up with my trim piece stuck to this. Then the other thing, you know, once I'd made this piece, I cut out in the middle so I'd have places to put clamps. And then around where I had the tightest radius, I drilled some holes so that I could get in there like this. And you could do that all the way around, but the only place I really needed it was right there. So I would just put those two pieces again, the pieces I wanted to have, for instance, on the one piece, I wanted to have almost seven eighths of an inch thick, uh, tall piece of trim. So I made my glue up about an inch because I knew I was going to have to clean it up. And the way that I cleaned it up, once it was had dried and I pulled off, is I just took a handheld planer and ran around the top to even it up. At that point, there's several things you could do. I actually take it carefully and feed it through a table saw. But the thing I always want to tell anybody is, don't do something you're uncomfortable with. There's other ways you could figure out to get that to a finished exact width. The last little tip that I want to share is I was sitting there with them. I thought, you know, I'm going to have just a really thin little piece of trim and I want to route a profile on it. How in the world am I going to do that? Then it occurred to me, as long as I had the piece of trim on the form, I could actually, you know, run a router on with it sitting on the top of the form you know, like this. Of course, one of those is, a, both of them actually have just a round over, and this isn't a round over, but it's still the same principle. With my layers being right here, and what I did after I got it cleaned up is I used a few headless pins to tack my trim boards on here, flush with this top. Then I was able to just let the router right on top of that with the bearing on there and make a very good profile on a super thin piece of trim. Well, again, I don't know that very many people are gonna get asked to do a project like this, but hopefully there's some really good tips that you can use for other things that you're doing. So do make sure you check out also my video that I did on how I actually created the original template for this kidney shaped uh, top.